Not long after Phil and Lisa divorce, Phil meets this blonde, statuesque woman named Bryn Omdahl. And once again, as with Lisa, as with Gretchen, he's almost immediately head over heels. When they meet, Phil is a decade older than Bryn, but neither one seems to have a problem with that. Bryn is an invention. Bryn is actually named Vicky Joe, and she's a small town girl from Minnesota. Vicky, she was a really fun kid. She had a lot of friends. She was very artistic, creative. She'd do a lot of drawing, and she was very good on the piano. She was tall and blonde and good looking and probably a very big fish in a small pond. And she came to Hollywood like a lot of people do. She had that beautiful Nordic face. She was the archetypical, beautiful, striking woman that when she walks into a restaurant or a party, everyone turns and looks at her. This is somebody who could be a movie star. She looks like Grace Kelly. She was flawless. Rin was beautiful, and she was also funny. She had tryouts for Hee Haw to be one of the Hee Haw girls that pops out of the corn stalks or whatever. <laughs> Bryn came to L.A. wanting to be an actress. She went on some auditions, wasn't having a lot of success on that front, but she did date some famous Hollywood men. And she did date Rob Reiner for a while, and she enjoyed Rob and all his friends. I remember thinking it was funny and so Hollywoody that Phil thought her pedigree with another super famous guy was a plus. That was something that made her more valuable. He wanted that kind of person on his arm. I think for Phil, that was a sign of success. I know she did start using cocaine, and she would tell me about parties she would go to and how fun it was and that this cocaine was a great drug, and she had a problem with cocaine. She did too much cocaine. She agreed to come to Fargo, and she went through treatment. He talked about that she'd been in rehab and had a lot of troubles, but she was great and they got along great. That's where Bryn is at the moment they meet. She was struggling, but people liked her. She was charismatic, she was fun. And for whatever reason, they clicked. And he was extremely enthusiastic about her pretty much from the beginning. Bryn told me that Phil kind of got his hooks in her by saying, you know, stick with me, baby, and I'll see that you get acting roles, and you will have a career, too. Bryn went out to Los Angeles to become an actress, and then she met Phil, and I think she thought that there would be benefits off of that relationship for her. He was looking for that young, pretty trophy wife. She was looking for someone that could help her out in her career, so seemingly this is kismet here. Phil, I think, was really enamored with her and her warmth and her look. I think all those things were really attractive at first. And then I think like with anything, especially people like that, there's a lot of baggage with it. And it seems kind of romantic at the beginning and then it just becomes personality problems later. As with Lisa, as with Gretchen, it becomes very intense, very fast. But as the months go on, the cracks begin to show, and Phil does what he did with his last two relationships. He begins to withdraw emotionally. They begin this pattern of fighting and making up and fighting and making up that would mark their relationship from there on out. I thought Phil was getting what he wanted, a beautiful woman, and I thought Brent was getting what she wanted, a successful guy. So with Bryn now on his arm, Phil has found the Hollywood beauty that kind of matches his stature. But professionally, he's still looking for that one job that will define him and in his mind, be what fame and fortune is all about. Oh. Phil Hartman, after a long apprenticeship in improvisational comedy and sketch comedy in 1986, finally gets to audition for Lauren Michaels and the crowd at SNL. Now this is a show that's a star maker. I mean, you've got everybody from Chevy Chase to Eddie Murphy to John Belushi, who began on SNL and went on to box office success in the movies. And you can see his audition on videotape. I can also do any dialect. Go ahead, call out a dialect. <laughs> I don't do that. 
Phil, in fact, gets hired for the 1986-1987 season. Phil said, when you're on SNL, you're at the center of the universe of America. Phil would say that. Right now, you get to be at the center of the universe. And that's not going to last forever. Cut tape. Cut tape! Cut tape!